So the sermon I have is uh, on Proverbs seventeen thirteen. Um, so you can turn to you can turn there if you like. But uh, it just says, "Whosoever rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house." So I'm going to be preaching on that today. The, the first point is looking at what it means to reward evil for good, and what the Lord says about these people. You know, so and this is when others do good unto uh, do good unto you. Don't return evil to them, so don't do bad things to them. Don't hate them or, or speak evil of them. Um, and it should be easy you know, not to return uh, evil for good. Um, what, what is hard is re- rewarding good for evil. You know, when they do evil to you, we have to return good to them as well. So that's what we're commanded to do. You know, in, no, in no case do we ever return evil for good or, or even you know, evil for evil. We return good for good and good for evil always. Um, so in Genesis chapter 44, um, now this is the story of Joseph and his brothers during that famine. You know, they were seeking food for Isaac. Uh, and jo- Joseph had not made himself known to the brothers at the time. Um, and, but he made it appear that the brothers were stealing from Joseph, even though the cup was planted by Joseph's men at the request of Joseph. But we see an example of rewarding evil for good. So in Genesis 44 verse 4, it says that when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. So if someone takes care of you, maybe they've brought you into their home for a meal or just to spend the night or something like that. They've shown some kind of charity towards you, and you would steal from them. You know, that's returning evil for good. You know, that's a wicked thing to do. Now, stealing is a sin in itself. Uh, but when you, do some, when you do that to someone who's just shown you nothing but, but love and kindness and compassion, you know, it shows that you have a wicked heart. Um, Psalm 35, I'll get you to turn there actually. And I'll start in verse 11. Psalm 35, verse 11, it says, False witness did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned unto mine own bosom. So the evil here was a false witness against David. You know, they were mocking him and afflicting, afflicting him with their words. And in verse 14, it continues on, I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and ceased not. With hypocritical mockers in feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long would thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my darling from the lions. So in verse 14, David says, He behaved himself as if they were his friend or brother. So he showed kindness to them, and he did good to them but they rewarded him with evil. You know, and just watch his response as well. It wasn't to, res- to respond with evil for evil, but it was to pray to the Lord to reward them for their evil. You know, so he sought the Lord's protection and salvation and let the Lord take judgment upon them. Psalms 38, 19, it says, But mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that good is. So it takes a really wicked person to rejoice in the hurt of someone that's shown nothing but kindness and goodness to you. you know, especially if they're a brother in Christ. You know, we all have our issues and we're all able to sin and fall. You know, but if you see your brother fall, you should have the compassion to pick him up, not to be the one who's putting him down. You know, next time it might be you who needs help. So I'll get you to turn to Psalm 109. We'll start in verse 1. And this probably isn't going to be less than 10 minutes, but <laughs> it shouldn't be more than 15. So, um, But it says in Psalm 109 verse 1, it says, Hold not thy peace, O God, of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For they love, For my love they are my adversaries, but I gave myself unto prayer. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. So again, these are slanderous people, the people who's cursing, who are cursing you. 
You know, they're being deceitful about you and spreading lies. You know, but why did they hate him? It's because he loved them and because he loved God. He loved that which was good. You know, so we see the response of David was not to take it into his own hands, um, but it was of the Lord. So in Psalm 109 verse 6, it carries on, Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. As he, loveth cur- as he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessings, so let it be far from him. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord, and of them that speak evil against my soul. You know, so judgment begons- belongs to the Lord, and we're to show good when they do us evil, because the Lord will reward them with evil. You know, and that's his job, that's his judgment. You know, that's not our place. And we see that Jeremiah was actually very similar to David. Um, I'll get you to turn to Jeremiah 18. Uh, we'll pick up in verse 18 of Jeremiah 18. And this is, this is the prayer that Jeremiah made, you know, against the people who were, who were coming against him. So Jeremiah 18, 18 says, Then said they, Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue. Let us not give heed to any of his words. So again, we just had that sermon from Nicholas about the words you know, that you use and the, you know, the sins of the tongue. You know, and this is another one when people can bring evil against you. You know, when you do good to them, they bring evil with the tongue. You know, that was one thing I noticed when I studied this out as well, is that a lot of it is to do with the tongue. People do evil with the tongue. They slander you. They lie about you. They curse you in the name of whatever God they have. Um, but we don't, we don't retaliate. Um, I'll, I'll just continue this. I can't remember where I was. Uh, I'll, verse 9. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away wrath from them. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. So that they devised evil against the prophet Jeremiah. But he prayed to the Lord that the Lord would recompense their evil, evil words and deeds. So that brings us to a second point. Is the Lord's the one who rewards those who do, do evil with us? Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And the Lord is a rewarder. He's a rewarder of good works for those who diligently seek him. But he never rewards evil for evil or evil for good. Evil for good. But he rewards every man according to his works. You know, so Ecclesiastes 12.14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Proverbs 13.21 says, Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. And Proverbs 14.9 says, The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. So again, the Lord's going to make them to kneel down at our feet, you know, because they've, they've returned evil for good. So the third and final point is we are to depart from evil. You know, we reward good for good and good for evil. You know, so those who deal kindly with you, be bless them. Those who deal Ill, do evil to you, be kind to them. Overcome evil with good. You know, the Lord's the one who will reward their evil deeds. It's not our job. You know, we're to seek good and not to do evil to others for any cause. So Proverbs 31, is, you're all familiar, it's the, it's the virtuous woman. Um, this is what it says in verse 10. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So again, be careful how you deal with your husband and your children. You know, don't reward their evil for good. You know, and the same would apply to children and parents and, and that as well. You know, you don't return evil to your children's good either. You know, like discipline them when they need it, but don't ever return evil for good. Then Amos 5.14 says... Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. And again, if your heart's good, you will not reward evil for good. You know, Christ said to the Pharisees, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of thine heart the mouth speaketh. 
A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And Romans 12.20 says, Therefore, if the enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And Proverbs 25.22, which is where this is quoted from, is, For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. You know, so you look up coals of fire in the scripture, you see it's the Lord who has these coals of fire. They're ever burning, ready to reward those who return evil for good. Um, 1 Peter 3.11 says, Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Um, 3 John 1.11 says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. So Saul was evil towards David, but David showed nothing but kindness to Saul. And the Lord rewarded David for his goodness by giving him the kingdom and taking it from Saul. In, in 1 Samuel 24, 17, it says, And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. So we'll just finish on this. But 1 Thessalonians 5.15, I'll just read a couple of scriptures for you. Actually, turn to Luke 6, verse 27. I'll just read 1 Thessalonians 5.15. It says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So again, we're, we're to render always good for good and good for evil. We never render evil to any man under any circumstances. And Luke 6.27 says, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies and do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, you know, and this is what David and Jeremiah did as good examples. And in verse 35 of Luke 6, it says, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. So let's pray.